Hey friends, Brandon here. We have the brand new Google Pixel 7 Pro. It has some new improved cameras, some updated tuning on it that I've been hearing about. So we're gonna go on a very casual, fun little photo walk. There was some rain earlier, so it's a little overcast. Perfect for videos and photos. So come along with me. One of the things that Google added to the Google Pixel 7 Pro is the macro mode. So let's check out some shots for that. You just see all these details on here of the leaf. I like this little warning sign here, 24 hours monitoring. So get a little pump in here on the focus. So that's interesting. It looks like it's in focus. Let's just try again. Yeah, that ultra wide is a little bit wider than last year. So I do like that. Colors are interestingly changing color temperature between each lens though. I don't know if you noticed that. The main one is a little bit warmer. The wider angle is a little bit cooler. Oh, it took a while to punch in there. The camera on the Pixel 7 Pro does have the same issue that I found on the Pixel 6 Pro in terms of being able to change between different lenses in a very smooth manner. There's a little bit of that lag on the telephoto for kicking in. I'm not sure if it's about minimal focus distance, which is kind of the bare minimum that you can be before it can loses the ability to be in focus. So that might be something that's trying to calculate and it's just not being able to, to do that quickly. One thing I'm noticing here is that look at the sky and you'll notice how it's changing the HDR effect between each lens. Okay, well, maybe not now. Okay, of course now. Oh, well, look at that. You can actually see it changing in real time on the live feed, so that's interesting. Yeah, that's the difference between an iPhone and a Pixel. Pixel's all post-processing. iPhone's doing it live while you're looking through the viewfinder. The way that it adjusts your focal lengths are inverted from last year, so it is kind of throwing me off in terms of muscle memory right now. Yeah, that, that telephoto is not good when you're actually close up to something. It looks a little bit washed out compared to the other lenses. So let's move somewhere else and see if we get a different result. I think they're setting up for a wedding, so it's gonna look like really pretty. We're gonna see if we can sneak to the other side and get some shots. Man, the step, the step stuff is actually not as easy. It's, it's a little finicky. What? It just closed on me. Oh, Google. Interesting. Let's maybe see how it handles like details and leaves and stuff with the sharp little edges and stuff. And then uh, I know it can actually do a little bit of a crop. So instead of going to 5X, you can actually go to 10X with an actual sensor crop. crop. Sensor crap. <laughs> There's also super res zoom. So it's got the AI things that Google's known for. So maybe it'll make it look even better. So let's do this. Five, one, two. Oh, that 5X is juicy. Okay, let's go to 10X and see how we get it. I'm actually really impressed by this uh, 10X here. There's some sort of processing going on here that I think it may actually look cleaner than the normal 5X. So maybe I'm wrong, but uh, I think the 10X actually looks pretty dang good. get a little video here. We got 0.5, one, two. It crashed on me again. I updated everything, but it crashed on me. What's going on, Google? Okay, let's try again. 0.5, 1X, 2X, so this is a sensor crop, and then 5X for the telephoto. Oh, you saw it like lag and kick in, but holy cow. Once the telephoto gets there, it looks great. Oh, but it's losing focus. It's losing focus, folks. The telephoto is one of my favorite things about the Google Pixel, but it still has the same issues that I had with the Pixel 6 Pro, where it's just gonna struggle with locking into or changing over to the telephoto lens itself. All right, let's try out the normal shot, and then we're gonna go to a motion shot, a long exposure to see how it performs here on this water. And yeah, you can see a little bit, probably a lot more fun on a waterfall and not a little dinky fountain that's over here. <laughs> Bummer, <laughs> not cool. And let's crank it to 10. All amps go to 11. And then apparently you can go to 30. Okay, for 30X, 
That's actually kind of decent. I, good enough for Instagram, but not something you'd actually want to print out or anything. But okay, Google, works out. Oh, I just I just chimed your little little Google Homes. I think one of the habits that I'll have when I'm testing out a camera is I want to try every single scene with every single focal length, but that's not really how you take the best photo. Sometimes you just need to find the right location, the right subject, and use the correct focal length, and that's it. You don't have to try everything. All right, so here is the selfie camera. I'm going 1x, 0.7x, so it's a little bit wider, and then you can even zoom in a little bit. So that's interesting, you can go to 2.9. Good grief. <laughs> I want to do a video with this. Well, let me go to 3.9x. Here is the front facing camera for video on the Google Pixel 7 Pro. You're at 1x. You don't have the ultra wide capabilities on the front facing camera for video, so that's interesting. But you can go up to point, uh, you can actually go all the way up to four. And uh, well, I don't think this really looks that good. Yeah, perfect, right there. Art. Oh, we got the portrait mode. Let's do the portrait mode. You know, granted, it's the pixel portrait mode. It's strong cut out, everything in the background's fully blurred out, so it's not like a real camera, <laughs> but it looks pretty good for what it is. All right, let's see how the telephoto will handle this. Now, when you're at 20X, this little pop-up screen shows up on the right corner to give you an idea of what your context is, so that's really cool. And then you can even go all the way up to 30x. Ooh, it's having a hard time focusing though. But we got it. How does video do? Okay, 0.5 on the video. 1x, 2, 5, kicks in. Go to 10. And let's go to 20. Interesting, it is pretty smooth-ish, but you can see the OIS creating some jitters there. Hey, by the way, this video is sponsored by Established Titles. If you've ever wanted to become a lord, you can while also preserving the natural woodlands of Scotland while helping global reforestation efforts. How? Well, there's this Scottish custom where landowners are referred to as lords or lords and ladies in English. So being Asian, it was obvious I had to take part in this Scottish custom. By purchasing a title, you'll receive at least one square foot of dedicated land with a unique plot number on a private estate in Edelston, Scotland, and an official certificate with a crest. You can even include the title of lord or lady on your credit cards, plane tickets, or dating profiles. I wonder if that'll help me out. The best part is that they plant a tree with every order by working with global charities, One Tree Planted, and Trees for the Future to support global reforestation efforts. And now that I have an established title, I am your lord. Wait, I mean, I am a lord in the landowner sense. In uh, Asian Scottish Lord way. Anyways, established titles is a great last minute gift which makes it perfect for the holidays. They're running an early Black Friday sale. Plus, if you use a special link and code in the description, you'll get an additional 10% off. Click the link in the description to get your gifts now and help support the channel. The first 200 people that purchase a title pack using my link will be within a few minutes of walking distance from my own plot of land. How cool is that? All right, uh, back to taking those photos. What the vibe is that I want? Cool stuff going on here because you have the blurriness of the foreground and a nice little kind of window into the street. So I think there's some neat things there. That's not my favorite picture though. <laughs> okay, I'm noticing that the macro does do a lot better if you tap to focus. What's interesting is that the interface for the macro, you can tap to focus on it, but then the little macro button is right there and you can accidentally hit it and it'll go to macro off. So that's a little bit confusing how they have that set up. And there's autofocus on the ultra wide now, so that's nice. We'll get this Mercedes. We'll try out the action pin here. I, that's pretty cool. This was on the Pixel 6 Pro. It makes it very easy to get these really like action packed shots here, but uh, it looks pretty good on the Pixel 7 Pro too as well. Let's do a portrait mode on the fire hydrant. Why not? Cause we can. Oh, so when you just process everything and use features where they don't make sense and it works. Look at that. Perfectly cut out of the fire hydrant. <laughs> so ridiculous. <laughs> All right, we're gonna try out the portrait mode here on Jake. We'll do the normal and then portrait. And you can see how it crops in a little bit. I think it did a pretty good job on the pole there. And it's actually a roll off there. Cause usually what I'm used to seeing on pixels is just a straight hard cutout with no roll off. So that does look like a bit of an improvement there. 
So we've tested out the portrait mode, the processing on the Google Pixel 7 Pro, but we also have a telephoto lens. And that is honestly what you have traditionally used for portrait shots. It has a really nice compression with the background and creates that nice, beautiful bokeh. So let's see how it compares to the artificial option. Holy cow, dude, this is crazy. So if you look at this, this is the portrait mode. So where it's all artificial, he looks a, a little crispy. There's a lot of crispiness going on with the image. But if I just use the telephoto lens, look at how natural and beautiful that looks. And it has that beautiful bokeh background there. I honestly don't think there's a point in having portrait mode anymore when you have a good telephoto. Okay. Ooh, that nice foreground blur. There's all these nice leading lines right here. What? focal length was this one uh oh no it's just it was the same lens but it just lost its color temperature is so, it like auto white balance maybe yeah and i think it missed it on that one yeah that's nice because you had the nice corner going on to right where i was at oh am i behind a leaf for good <laughs> let's test out this telephoto here it's, Ten X. Let's go to twenty. Overview screen pumps in at sixteen X. I'm noticing here that uh, again the five X is pretty stellar. Ten X is really great. Anything else beyond that is like it's okay. You can post it on social media; it'll be fine. But it really loses. Rude. Um, so, like, but anything beyond the ten X, it starts to admit having diminishing returns. So, something to keep in mind. I'm noticing that it's not making the skies look overly blue, which is kind of nice. Sometimes uh, with the HDR capabilities, it can make everything look like it's painted in. I really hate that look. I'd rather have a more natural look. Pixel tends to be a little bit more processed, a little bit more sharpened and contrasty, but at least in this shot, it's not doing all that crazy stuff, which I appreciate. Now, something that is really interesting that I just found while looking through these photos is the power of Google's artificial intelligence and in adding different things to your photos that wasn't originally there before. So we we're taking this telephoto shot that we had right here and it gives me this little prompt at the bottom that says blur background. So I can just tap that and it'll start processing it and create a portrait mode photo. We didn't shoot in portrait mode. We shot in a telephoto shot and we can see right here and what's really great about this one, I think this is actually better than the normal portrait mode, but you have the option to do a slider of how much blur you have. So instead of the over the top pixel portrait mode blur, you can kind of chill it out a little bit and scale it back to something that looks a little bit more natural. And I think that looks pretty awesome. Let's go portrait mode on that to see what that's like. I kind of like it when it's not in macro. This is time for cinematic pan. Can you focus on it, Google? It does lose focus. That is a little bit of a bummer. Yeah, so when you go to macro, it loses some of that, that nice shallow depth of field that you may normally like, but you can get pretty dang close. So that part is kind of cool too. It has live photo on there, kind of like the iPhone as well, if you want that. So that's kind of neat. I wonder how they look like on a telephoto. Let's see. There's something about a telephoto lens that makes everything so beautiful because it compresses so much and allows you to get this really beautiful foreground bokeh. Let's try it on, in a video. Let's see how it looks. It just crashed on me again. I don't know if it saved that. Okay. I'm losing a little focus. If there's one thing that I would say is that it, the video is looking better and I like how it's handling bokeh, but there's some issues with locking its focus and I don't really know what's going on. I do wish they would add LiDAR onto the Google Pixel 7 Pro or the future versions because that's definitely pulling some weight on the iPhone. Let's try it in not 10-bit HDR. Let's see how that compares on these lights. Still losing focus a little bit here and there. That's not terrible. And then hopefully gain focus right here. Nope. It is not getting the focus that I'd want. The problem with HDR is the fact that you have to have a display that's going to actually accept it. So 
I think I like 10-bit, but I don't know if I like HDR. Maybe because I'm just a snob. And I like the kind of more cinematic look. <laughs> Not everything needs to be the brightest thing in the world. You know what I mean? So. It has a hard time focusing on the telephoto. So we've been testing out the telephoto lens and it looks like it does have a minimal focus distance. You have to be about two feet away in order for it to be in focus. If you get any closer, the telephoto lens will have a hard time kicking in and it will not be in focus. So keep that in mind. Okay, we just found this little alleyway thing that's pretty dark. So we need some nighttime shots and night mode shots. We'll also get some video to see how it handles the darker area. So Jake, why don't you uh, go stand over there? So we have no night sight turned on, 0.5. 1x, 2x, let's go video. Now our video without night sight on, well, we don't have night sight, but like, oh wow, 1x is significantly better. I go 5x, come on, there it is. Ooh, that's, yeah, I can't, I can't see you at all. Let's, uh, now let's go back to photo with night sight on. Um, Night Sight's definitely doing some work here. One X is not too bad. It's a little soft on the two X. This is how dark it is normally. That's pretty dang good for the one X and the two X. That's a dramatic difference. Yeah, I'm back home. I really love the Google Pixel 7 Pro's camera, especially that telephoto lens. It's amazing. But I have some concerns about portrait mode. I'm not sure if we need to use it anymore. There's some weird digital artifacts that are going on. I'll look into that a bit more. And with all the great features that are being added to the Google Pixel camera, I feel like the controls are becoming a little bit hard to use. I actually want more professional controls that makes it easier to use. Something like how that macro mode is a little bit weird. Uh, you can accidentally hit it and so it goes out of macro mode. And then how the zoom sliders are a little bit more complicated it's hard to actually go to actual 5 or 10 when you're actually scrolling through it you'll get 5.2 it's kind of weird anyways what are your thoughts let me know in the comments and if you want to pick up the google pixel 7 the google pixel 7 pro cases or skins or anything like that click the link down below in the description and thanks so much to the established titles for sponsoring this video thanks so much for watching this is tech today until next time